Here we go, Mick here from the Hop Cartel and welcome to the new video. Um, so Saturday morning, Newcastle, beautiful day. I've just finished the lawns. Um, been mixing up some, some mulch and obviously doing some weeding as well. Since I'm out there mowing, I pull a few things out here as I'm going. Um, so the the mulch I've decided to use up, I had a 30 litre block of coconut coal left over that I was using for um, for the storing the rhizomes that I cut away from those crowns. Um, crowns are actually pretty pretty huge. I've cut away as much as I can, but I've um, I've left them sort of in there. Next year it's going to be a complete overhaul. I'll be fully stripping them out. I've got the new rhizomes cut off. That'll be the new stock. The other one's coming out, and I'd say I'd be offering up some pretty large um, um, sections of crown. Um, so yeah, the ratio I've decided to go with is 70% um, um, sugarcane mulch with the 30% uh, coconut core um, soil additive. Uh, like I say, the stuff that I've used to um, to store the rhizomes in the, ref the refrigerator. So I've spread that, um, mixed that up in containers and I've spread that over two of the four um, garden beds that I've got the hops going in at the moment. Um, so fair few of the rhizomes that I didn't give away, they're going to um, up to a friend's property. Um, it's got um, a creek running through it. And, creek always running has running water um, soil testing out there's come come back pretty good there's um, some good soil up that in that area um, so there'll be a fair bit of the the Chinook the Pride of Ringwood um, I've got Hurstbrucker going up there and um, Uh, a few sections of the the wild hop that we've, we've got here going out there as well um, the wild hop is very low yielding but um, it's got it's got um, it's got good um, lupulin sort of oil content to the flower so we're, we're hoping if we change the um, position that they're growing in um, sort of a different area, slightly different environment as well that um, we may um, may end up with a little bit more we're not crossing our fingers and holding our breath on that one and um, see how they go there we've done a little test run last year and um, got pretty good results with the um, with the Hurstbrucker and um, that was only a sort of a small section that I, I sort of cut cut away that was it didn't look too fancy but it, it took really well so um, yeah we'll, we'll see how the bigger area goes with those um, so I'll just um, just head out and I'll show you these two these two plots that I've got and um, sort of how I've dressed them um, I've obviously got the, the pitchfork in there and give them a bit of a stir up, lifted them up, get some air through the soil and, and mixed in this mulch, sort of uh, try and build it up a bit. So, um, right, uh, so. That's obviously the, um, the mix still quite moist that one was put down of well, last weekend um, got the strawberries in there as well they've died back a fair bit actually we um, was pulling a fair bit of the leaves off the strawberries um, in last year's season the feed to the rabbit and, um, and she loves them 
It's a bit of fertiliser burn on those. Yeah, so I've also thrown down a slow release, um, good quality slow release, just scattered a little bit of that around the, in there. I forgot to mention at that end, I think on the last video, I said I had the, um, the only one that was in here was the hearse bracket, but I've actually, um, I've got a um, Alawadu metal through um, at the far end there. It's going into its second year in the soil. First year was in a planter box. Um, and I decided just to throw it at that end. Um, it is a bit close to the hearse bracker, so I don't want them to sort of inter intertwine and, and grow to the point where I don't know sort of what variety is what. Um, I already made that mistake in the first year um, with Chinook and Pride and Ringwood, so I had to do my best to take rhizomes away from the far ends of the the garden bed so that I knew that I was definitely getting those varieties. This other one I've done this morning. Um, so it's still quite damp in there. I have to say it's a quite a sizable um, garden bed that one. So I've got variety in a pot here. Bit of a funny setup that one, but um, that's just there to to get um, to get good growth into the rhizome, and then the second year it's off into a into the ground and a pot itself. Um, next to that is me kick-ass Chinook in the, in the big brown pot. Um, that's going into a bigger one that's getting moved as well. Um, it was a, a lateral cutting actually that um, I took um, two seasons ago. Um, got a bit off it this season uh, but it's raring to go. It, it started budding up and spitting shoots out um, up through the surface so I'd, I've just thrown some more stuff on top of it send it dormant um, another variety here that's um, can't quite put me finger on at the moment um, I wrote in the book what varieties were in each pot there so Anyway, we'll, um, we'll sort that out at a later date. Um, so basically that's it, yeah. So like I said, it's, I've gone 70% um, sugar cane mulch and a 30% um, coconut core. Um, beautiful. Go on. Oh, look, see, there's a bloody... It's not covered over there, so I have to... Anyway, I'll keep building this up over the next couple of weeks. And, um, get some more sort of um, height and thickness to the, to the actual mould. Build that garden bed back up again. Um, so, on the topic of hops, on eBay I've just got some of these... Um, I've got a heap of products coming in too, but um, it's uh, not much on there at the moment. But I've got um, hop shots. Now I've listed them at twenty dollars. You get three um, ten mil syringes, so thirty mils all up. Um, Nelson Sovereign, uh, Mawika, and Mosaic are the varieties that are available in the three pack. Um, just to get rid of them. We've got half of them going to uh, another another friend who um, who makes fudge and candles and soy wax melts and all that kind of stuff out of um, out of things like that. So they're going to try that and give me some feedback. And if that if that works out, and then I'll I'll get onto the supplier and I'll. Uh, I'll hook some of that up. Um, the keys are so I've got the 
We've got the whole front done in these um, cedar slats of the old cedar blinds. Um, got the sides to do. I can't quite do the sides at the moment um, till I lift the lid off and um, get rid of those hinges. That's what's stopping me from from putting those side pieces on and the um, four tap collar um, that's going on there. I'll dress that as well in. Um, I'm thinking maybe uh, a checker plate or or something similar, um, different. But I've I was almost going to go the cedar slats, but running vertical, and and then the obviously the rest of it running horizontal. I've got um, some angle trim in in a wood grain look, and I've also got some in a um, in a, a uh, aluminium checker plate as well so depending on sort of what I decide to do in the end I'm, um, uh, I'm leaning towards the checker plate so I can sort of run that whereas the the wood grain angle is um, it's just a laminated um, uh, petal or similar to a powder coat I guess you could say but it's sort of like a, it might not tie in with the um, with um, the cedar slats so that's um, that's that. I've got the um, just got to order all the um, the kegs, taps, lines, CO2, all that kind of junk to um, get it up and running. Coming up better than what I thought. I was gonna have a lot of trouble. It's taken some time to get it to that to that point, but uh, it is what it is. Um, so today I'll get that the lid lifted off that. Um, we'll get the collar um, anchored down uh, with the adhesive, and um, we'll put some weight on it. Um, get that filled. Put down a two can kit beer. Um, just check the. The book last night I've got all the dates written down for when when the cans have got to be used which I acquired I think many of you know I acquired a, a pretty good deal was um, a lot of fermentables um, cans um, liquid malts uh, sanitizers uh, yeast uh, grain Anything to do, do a brewing, you name it. I've got, you know, I picked up that barrel in the same deal. Um, picked up um, the capper, uh, lots of other stuff. Like it's just, I can't, you know, I can't mention it off the top of my head. But you think of it, you name it. I've got, I've got it in that deal. Pretty good deal too. So I'm saying that, yeah. Um, checked the book last night and two of those cans need to be used one's a pilsner and the other one's a wheat so going with a two can looks like we're going to have a heavy and um, so what we can do with that I don't think I've got any um, European hops that I can use in it I've got some fuggles Maybe a little bit of East Kent. Um, I've got a shite load of Hurstbrucker uh, flowers. I might just go with that. And um, I'll have a look at some recipes. And see what we can come up with for those two cans. I've also got an all grain going down as well. So it's going to be quite a busy weekend. I say I've got the lawns done, I've got that mulching done. Um, I was going to wash the cars, but that's not going to happen. Anyway, remember, like, subscribe and share. Um, join in. Also head over to World Home Brew Club on Facebook. Um, also the Hop Cartel on Facebook. And um, get involved. Um, Join up, World Home Brew Club, get involved with the Hop Cartel, 
upload your um, your photos of your of your progress with your with your hop yards. Um, obviously, we with the World Home Brew Club, we want to see some some different varieties of things happening on there. You're your cooking, uh, your, your brewing, um, other things like uh, cheap builds. You know, great ideas. I think I would have would have video at one stage with my. Um, this is my. Um, bottle drying rack which doubles as the the hop drying rack get sun on this wall all day got ventilation coming through the through the um, the vents that I've made along the wall there um, so the, sort of when the, br the breeze comes down the front the back of the house it passes through the vents and across here um, obviously in summer it's quite warm so you got the heat coming off the back wall and the ventilation coming through works quite well for drying the hops on um, so that's um, that's on hinges also on um, high tensile strapping so that it folds down um, fits around about a hundred bottles on there um, depending on their sizes less for your obviously your um, your long necks and um, I originally made it because I was I was only using uh, 330 mil stubbies, so um, can do a fair bit. Same time, um, works a charm. Um, so yeah, like we want to see things like that as well. Um, you know, that that was my first ever mash, Tani Vanesky. Just a um, water butt tap off a. Um, off a water drum, uh, PVC um, uh, what do you call them, a uh, PVC um, God. man my memory is terrible at the moment like a foot, you know, like your false bottom and um, so that was my first ever one. That cost me all of. I was a Esky was a roadside pickup. Um, tap was a dollar. Um, the conduit. The conduit. Um, I picked up off of a job site. Got some more up there. Obviously, um, cut some slots in it. And um, cost me. Uh, Cost me about five dollars to make. Um, the insulation, pick that up up off a, an old a job that we're doing. Got a, I don't know if you can see out there. Got a heap more of it. Uh, a lot more of it actually. So that is going to be going around. Um, I've got another build here happening. I picked up this big stainless steel um, cold water urn. No, there's no heating or anything. It's a double tap urn. Got two taps on it. Picked that up for 20 bucks. Got that build happening as well. And I got another. Um, I got another uh, um, Gatorade um, cylindrical um, esky twos, uh, well bucket eskies or whatever they call them. You know, kind of buy a false bottom and make another one out of that that'll be my main my main brewing apparatus I think just gonna go back to brewing the bag um, very soon for a while until I can get the the money to, to buy a bigger system again um, which I sold many years ago um, to buy the house at the help of the deposit so I um, I let go of something that I really I really loved and um, Took me a long time to get over it, but I think I'll, I'll get back to that point. So anyway, like I say, like, share, subscribe, getting involved with the Hop Cartel on YouTube, Facebook, and also World Home Brew Club. Um, head on over to Jason's page, um, uh, his channel, um, Charm Brewing and Sports. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Um,
Jason's um, little project he's got going there. We both got the same interests. We've, we've always got the same ideas, so um, um, support all around. And uh, cheers, thanks for watching.